welcome dear students so students let us start another lesson you can say in years but it will not be a new lesson children it will be another video but not a new lesson why because we are going to continue what we started last time remember we were doing this lesson on food we talked about why our body needs food and we also talked about the food requirements of certain animals and that time i told you that this is not all for today children we are going to continue this lesson next time remember so come on let us go on and let us do part 2 of the lesson that we started last time our need for food okay in this part of the lesson we will be talking mainly about the food requirements of animals and also of plants now we all know that animals can move around animals have their hands and they have their mouths and they eat with their paws isn't it they tear the flesh with their teeth now what about plants plants cannot move from one place to another and we cannot see plants also having mouth or paws or hands or whatever then how do this plants eat so that will also be very interesting to know so come on children let's start our lesson you know that the animal kingdom is very vast human beings means we talked about only human beings but when we talk about animals then you have wild animals you have domestic animals you have birds you have insects so we are supposed to talk about all of them isn't it so come on let's talk about some animals now in today's lesson and then towards the end of the lesson we will also talk about our other friends in nature that is plants or trees we will see how they also eat okay now let us come to some more animals so in the beginning we will talk about some domestic animals and then we will go to wild animals so cats children actually they love to eat mice okay you know that there is very famous cartoon called as tom and jerry where tom is the cat and jerry is the mouse and tom is forever running in order to kill the jerry okay so cats they love to eat mice that is their natural kind of food okay but they can also eat other things like they can eat fish they can eat bread they can eat eggs milk etc so if you have a cat which you have kept at home if you have a pet cat now naturally you will not want it to go and kill mice and eat so you will feed it all these things you can feed it fish you can feed it bread milk chapatis also the cats eat anything which you give them they will eat when they were small okay when they were small you can say kittens whatever habits you have given them or feeding them they will eat that thing only okay and then you know there are special foods which are made for this cats like for example you have vikas vikas etc which are made for this cats special cat they also that also cats eat if it is a cat which is your pet you can feed this also all right now what about dogs now dogs are actually meat eaters okay they are carnivorous animals and they are descendants of the fox that is they were foxes once upon a time and wolves 
and gradually they changed and they were domesticated and then they became dogs so they are actually like these wolves and these foxes they love to eat meat okay but then if you keep a dog at home what do you do you feed it different things from your kitchen you feed the dog whatever you eat isn't it so what all things this dog eat then the dog can eat chapatis rotis bhakris look at this one he is sitting with so many rotis he doesn't want to share it with anyone so you must have seen this people feeding dogs chapatis they give them bhakris to eat they give them bread to eat isn't it they are also fed milk and eggs and you give them dal rice also sometimes they can eat anything that is when they are pets in your home and when you bring them they are very small you can start feeding them anything that you eat and they will continue with the habit so basically they are actually meat eaters they are carnivorous animals okay so look even for dogs you have this kind of special food okay now these are for dogs which are pet dogs because this kinds of food are very expensive you must have seen in the advertisement pedigree on your tv sometimes okay so all that is specially made food for the dogs okay so look how we have changed this animals so the cats used to love uh, used to love eating mice and the dogs used to love eating meat but since we made them our pets since we domesticated them we have changed their eating habits okay so this is what the pet animals or the domesticated animals they eat now what about animals which live in the wild that is animals which are not domestic now look this is a deer okay you must have never uh, seen a person keeping a deer as a pet okay as a pet if you do that the police will come and take you away okay because you are not supposed to keep wild animals at your home as pets so this is a deer can you see what the deer is eating yes it is eating grass so there are certain animals which are not domestic that is they are wild animals but they are herbivorous okay herbivorous means they eat plants or vegetarian you can say basically okay just like vegetarian people they eat only fruits they eat only vegetables they do not eat meat fish etc in the same way there are certain wild animals which are vegetarian that is they are herbivorous and the deer is one of them look what the deer is doing he is eating grass isn't it now there is one more animal which i want to show you now this is a bison look what the bison is eating the bison is also eating grass so there are many animals like this for example we have the nilgai we have buffaloes etc which eat grass which eat leaves etc sometimes what happen is when they do not find grass in the jungles they slowly get into the fields okay the farms and then they start eating a very crops also that is the time they become a trouble for human beings but children at this point we also have to remember that animals also have a right to live on this earth doesn't it what have we done we human beings have cut down the jungles and we are keeping on making fields we are keeping on buildings uh, villages etc so these poor animals are left with no choice okay we can think 
like that also all right so these are some animals which are not domestic that is they are wild animals yet they are vegetarian what about some wild animals which are not vegetarian look at this it's a lion okay what is it doing it is eating zebra can you see so that you will see that the lion is not trying to eat grass is the lion trying to eat grass no it is trying to eat another animal so that is why we call the lion as carnivorous okay carnivorous means you can also say he is a non vegetarian animal that is it is eating a non vegetarian food it doesn't it doesn't eat only fruits or only leaves or only vegetables but it has to eat other animals okay so that means there are animals which live in the deep jungles so they hunt other animals and they eat their flesh sometimes what happens is when these lions do not get food in the jungle that is they are not able to catch the deer and eat it and it is feeling very hungry at such times you will see that such animals they also enter the villages and they kill and eat cattle hens etc okay so this also can happen actually they like to hunt and eat they like to catch animals in the jungle only and eat in case they are not getting food in the jungle then slowly they might come and they might eat animals from our farms also in very rare cases children once in a while you will also see animals like lions tigers leopards etc which become man eaters because human beings are very easy target for them we cannot run as fast as they can isn't it and we cannot fight with them also because they are very powerful so we are easy to catch and eat so once they get to a habit of eating human beings they become man eaters all right you must have seen in movies and serials but unfortunately then we kill them to save our own lives okay you will also see certain other animals like uh, look at this fox it also tries to enter people's houses to find food but the foxes are small animal it cannot eat a cow or it cannot eat a buffalo for that matter it cannot eat even a goat so what do these foxes do they try and catch hold of hens ducks etc which are smaller in size so they try and eat those are those kind of animals okay children so this was about the food of animals which are not kept at home that is they are not pets and they are uh, put it in the category of wild animals so you saw some of these wild animals they eat grass they eat plants they eat fruits so they are herbivorous and some others like the tiger the lion the fox etc they eat other smaller animals and they are carnivorous okay so this was about the need of food for these animals now children let us talk about one simple thing which you will learn when you will go to the higher classes but now we will try to understand it in very simple way so here did you see that in one way or the other all the animals are connected to each other aren't they connected let us start by understanding look first there is sunlight because of the light of the sun the plants make their food you will understand this better when we talk about food of the plants so because of the sun the plant makes food and there are certain animals then which eat this plants like for example the deer the deer will go and eat the grass or the plant which you can see here there are certain other animals which eat the deer 
for example look the lion if he is hungry and if he see the deer in front of him he will definitely kill the deer and he will eat it flesh okay so there are animals which eat other animals and then there are this really tiny animals or insects which will eat the waste of these other animals so look imagine if this insects will not get the waste of this lion or the deer it will die okay if the lion or the tiger does not get deer to eat the lion or the tiger will die and if the deer does not get plants to eat the deer will die okay and if there is a problem with sunlight the plants will not grow so if you do not allow plants to grow the herbivorous animals won't be there if the herbivorous animals won't be there then the carnivorous animals won't be there and if the herbivorous and the carnivorous animals both are not there then all these little little insects will also die away one day isn't it so what is this entire thing called children it is called as the food chain it is a chain so just like you have a chain in which you have the different kadis if you remove one kadi the chain breaks isn't it so that is how it uh, nature works so all these things are important for us so you should try to see that you do not cut down plants you should try to see that you save the life of all animals which are living on this earth because god has put all of them there for a particular need or for a particular motive okay so one of this is not there all the other animals will be affected so this is called as the food chain now since we are talking about this little little insects let us look what they eat before that let us talk about the birds so look what are this these are so many birds okay there are so many birds they are birds okay they are not insects they are birds but they are huge in number and what do they do you know they attack the crops so you can see the field there which is ready to be harvested so that is i think jowar or bajra something like that and these birds they come in this huge numbers and they eat away and they destroy the entire crop they destroy the entire field okay this kind of things also happen children sometimes uh, uh, you can look here look they get into the fields and they uh, eat away all the crops it is not their fault they are also hungry isn't it so what do people do in such cases then so the farmers have to face huge losses in case something happens so then what do they do look what they do here also you can see sometimes the sparrows and the other birds who eat away at the grains so what happens is there is the loss for the farmers so then the farmers make use of such scarecrows okay scarecrows so have you seen this okay there is uh, this particular you can say figure of a human being which is made look they have uh, worn up a pant they have put on the pant for that stick and the stick has worn a t-shirt also there is a cap also and they have made hands and legs and they have made a head okay and what happens is when this thing they put it in the field the scarecrows in the field the birds feel that people are standing there okay and the birds do not come forward and attack this kind of fields so children isn't it interesting these are called as scarecrows you must have seen this in the fields also sometimes people also use this kind of bird scarecrows 
they are called as bird scarers okay instead of making very big scarecrows uh, you can even make a small things to scare away the birds so there is this particular potato and they have inserted so many feathers into the potato so when the birds see sees it it feels this is something different and they sense some kind of danger and therefore they do not attack the particular field all right look this is one more example of a bird scarer so they have uh, a cut out they have a cut out a piece of plastic and they made it look like an owl and their two big eyes also all right made out of cds so this is a bird scarer along this nowadays there are many electronic devices also which send out a figure vibration so that the birds do not come near the fields okay these are something which happens and which is not good for our brothers and sisters who are fam who are farmers so they have to prevent such destruction and therefore they try to do such things they try to use slingshots also and they try to set up a scarecrow they make use of such bird scarers okay to drive away these birds now there are certain birds who live near human population that is for example the sparrows they live near the place where people live and what is the reason for that the reason for that is they get ready made food to eat you must have seen sparrows if you are living in a village now if you are living in a uh, li living in cities unfortunately it is difficult to sight such sparrows but if you are living in a village you must have seen a lot of sparrows they are called as house sparrows okay look they are eating away at cooked food cook foods so someone who has put this cooked food outside on the road and these sparrows are feeding on them they might also eat raw grains and you must have seen people feeding them also there are many people who feed the sparrows they feed this pigeons so if you ever come to mumbai then you will see there are places which are officially called as kabutar khanas where people feed this pigeons there where there are big big feeders kept and there this pigeons go there and they feed in huge numbers okay so this is one interesting thing so there are many animals like the pigeons the crows the sparrows which live close to human beings why because they do not want to go and attack the fields they know that they will get ready made food when they stay near to the human population all right children let's move on and let's talk about these friends of ours who are also in one way or the other useful for us okay but at the same time some of them can be nuisance also for us but anyways let us see what these tiny creatures eat so what all animals can you see here which all creatures can you see here there is a beetle in the middle and then there is a house fly which is very harmful for us okay house flies spread different kind of diseases then you can see the image of the butterfly and of course ants all right let us look one more image of some more animals who actually be considered as pest in our house so you have the cockroaches you have lizards okay then bed bugs and mice and spiders these are all tiny tiny creatures but children they also need food isn't it they cannot survive if they do not eat food so what do they eat what do this tiny tiny creations of god what do they eat so they also have their own you can say menu when it comes to eating so bed bugs they suck human blood okay remember these animals cause a lot of diseases also okay so it is not good if you have pests at home what should you do you should try to drive them away from your homes 
so bed bugs they will settle in your bed why they are called bed bugs because they are found in usually in mattresses in your home they will suck on your blood okay they will suck your blood blood then they will suck someone else blood so these are one kind of tiny creatures that you find in your house look they also suck blood of uh, animals if you have dogs at your home you must have seen this kind of animals on the skin of your dog and they are very tiny in the beginning and then finally they start growing growing and they become like a small balloon okay because of sucking the blood of the dog these children this small thing even though they suck the blood of animals they can sometimes bite human beings also and cause different kind of diseases like tick fever not only in animals but also in human beings look at this lizard look he's nicely caught hold of the spider and he is eating the spider the spider in turn will eat fly or the mosquito look this is one more uh, you can say type of lizard look how nicely it caught the ant and it ate the ant so every animal children it's whether it is a human being whether it is a big animal whether it is a small animal whether it is a domestic animal or a wild animal an animal which you take as pet in your house whether it is a cattle all kinds of animals need to eat that is what we come to know from this part of the lesson isn't it look here uh, this is a worm you must have seen this kind of worms in cauliflowers full gobi when you buy this full gobi cauliflower as we call it and if we, you are not very careful then you might end up chopping of few of these worms also along with the vegetable so look what it is doing it is eating some kind of leaves okay so these worms also they need to eat so we just discussed that all types of animals eat look at this beautiful butterfly uh, butterflies you can see that it is a feeder of the butterfly okay it is the feeder of the butterflies it is in inserting that into a plant and it is sucking the nectar from that particular flower or flowers also there is not a single animal on this earth that does not need to eat now let us go to our other friends in nature are that is plants so what kind of plants are this these are potted plants that means these are plants that we have in our house so for this plants we keep them water and we give them different kind of fertilizers even the plants which are there in our fields a uh, crops we give them water fertilizers etc but while plants they also need to make food now remember children plants are the only things that do not consume other living things they make their own food now how do plants make their own food how do how, uh, do they have a kitchen do they have knives and pans or pots let us look look this is how plants eat food so plants need food just like as human beings plants also need food so can you see the roots of the plant which uh, root of the plant which is inside the ground inside the ground in the soil the root pulls up certain nutrients from the soil and through this stem it gives to the leaves okay all right can you see this is one way in which the plants live or they gather food for themselves then there is one more thing that can uh, thing you can see this is a leaf okay on the surface of this leaf if you look at it under microscope you will see there are tiny tiny pores on them there are tiny tiny holes on this leaf now it is through this holes that air enters the leaves 
so just like human beings need air we need water we need food in the same way the plants also need air water and food so the plants absorb water from the soil isn't it and also along with the water the plants also absorbs some other nutrients which are there in the soil so you can see the blue dots are all water and the other yellow dots are certain other things which the plant get through from soil and the plant get air from this pores on the leaf so if you try looking at the leaf you might not see this pores but if you look at the leaf under the microscope then you will see that you will uh, see this pores okay so whatever air and whatever water is absorbed it comes together in this leaf so the leaf will absorb the air and the root will also pull out the water pull out the water and send it to the leaf through the stem so the leaf becomes like a key chain for the plant can you see uh, so the leaf along with the sunlight and along with the water and the air that it got what it will do it will make food for the plant so plants make their own food using the water and the air in the leaf and also the most important thing for plants to make food is the sunlight now when you grow up a little bit more and when you go to a higher class you will learn what this process is called and how it happens etc in detail now for the third standard level since it is a obvious lesson it is important for you to just remember that plants make their own food using water which is pulled up by the roots and using air which is absorbed by the leaves and the most important thing is sunlight okay so look here how the water h2o means water water is pulled up by the leaf and the air is also pulled up in by the leaf that is co2 is carbon dioxide pulled in by the leaf and the sunlight and you can uh, see how the plant makes food for itself in the leaves okay so what is the most important thing for plants to make their own food it is the leaves or you can say it is the sunlight without sunlight the leaves will not be able to make uh, any kind of food for the plant so children like i told you now it is the plants on which everything else is dependent it is only plants which can make their own food now you will say teacher we also make our own food we also get sabji from the market and we cut it and we cook it but remember you are getting the sabji from the market you are not capable of pulling out your own sabji from your hands or your legs isn't it so let us look this particular image and this particular image you will come to know look this are the plants which are eaten by the deer okay and the deer is eaten by the tiger isn't it so there are no plants there will be no deer and no tiger look at the other example here look this plants are eaten by this insects and this insects are eaten by the frog and the frogs are eaten by the snake and the snake is eaten by the eagle so if there are no plants there will be no insect no frog no snake and no eagle similarly here look the scorpion then the fish and then the fish is eaten by the bird so all these things in one way or the other they are all dependent on plants okay so even though the tiger does not directly eat plants the tiger indirectly eat plants because the tiger eats the deer which eats the plant so indirectly the tiger is also you can say dependent on plants so now you know what is the most important thing for all of us in nature it is plants that is why we always encourage you your teacher always tells you plant more trees plant more trees do not cut trees etc and then we have 
human beings who will eat all these things we human beings we are capable of eating all of these things we eat plants also we eat animals also we eat insects also isn't it so this was about our need for food okay when we say our we do not mean only human beings but we also mean the plants the animals the insects etc so children let us summarize what we have learned today in this lesson so we have learned that living things need food that is plants also need food animals also need food uh, birds insects and we human beings also need food food gives the body strength to work it helps the body to grow and to repair its wear and tear next we learn that animals search for ready food in nature and eat it like for example sparrow okay okay uh, and then what we have learned for food of different living things is different okay all the animals all the birds or human beings or insects they have their different food okay they eat different food so food of different living thing is different some animals eat the flesh of other animals some eat grass and leaves some suck the blood of other animals while other eat insects and some insects feed on the leaves of plants okay so next what we learn that is with the help of sunlight plants prepare their own food so children this was this particular lesson which we did in two parts so you can watch part one of this lesson in the video which i have put up earlier and this was part two of the lesson so hope you have understood in great detail about food or our need for food that's all for today thank you children